Hello everyone. Have you ever heard of the line of King David? One that was promised rulership and power, massive influence and more? Only a small percentage of people know the truth of the matter. There is not one Davidic line, but two. This is the pedigree of the last kings of Judah. As you can see, Zedekiah was the king at the time of the Babylonian exile. He was the last king to hold that authority in Judah before the Jews got taken to Babylon. On the other hand, Jehoiachin, he was actually the one with the lineal descent from King David. He was actually the proper king. Zedekiah was his uncle that the Babylonians put in charge before ransacking and destroying the city of Jerusalem for good. So, there's two lines. There are two lines, two Davidic lines, that probably, at this point, have equal claim to the throne of David. Now, and this is very interesting. So, where did they go is the question. Well, where are they today? The line of Zedekiah, all his sons died. All his sons were killed. The Bible tells us this. However, it is speculated that he had daughters, one by the name of Tia Tefi, that his historical and folklore records show, was taken to Ireland, married a king there by the name of Harriman, and then that eventually became the British monarchy by enough marriages. On the other hand, Jokachain's um, descendants became the Exilarchs in Babylon, who were local government, essentially, until they were expelled. The theory is they went to the Iberian area. So they went to like Spain, southern France, um, to escape the Babylonians. And uh, the rulers that had popped up in the area at that time, who had killed their father, the last exilarch. Um, and that was about the 11th century, that there was the last exilarch and... Then the claims to that line get very sketchy. There's not a whole lot of proof anyone produces. And there is no definitive exilarchy anymore. So that side of the tree is more speculative. We think it might be out there, but there's no hard proof of its existence. It's worth noting that the promise of rulership is prized through Tefi. That's, that's the only way to make... The promise to David work. The, the sons of Jekyll Chain, they, they're also a valid line, but the promises seem to have gone through Zedekiah and his offspring. So there's there's questions about these lines exactly. Where exactly are they today? Are they, there's different perspectives. So I'm going to go through most of what can be found on the different perspectives. The first theory is that Western European Jews, some of them, especially in Barcelona, um, Northern Spain, Southern France, some of them may be ex-larks who, uh, whose father fell off favor with Babylonian leaders uh, and died and they had to run. Um, according to an Aish rabbi, that's how things happened. Of course, they could have a stake in the matter, um, but that's my source for this. And I think it's perfectly valid. David was a Jewish man. Uh, his descendants are probably also going to be Jewish men and women as well. So there's probably some merit to the theory. Theory two is the British monarchy. And that would be from Zedekiah and, T and Tefi as well, uh, through various different marriages. And the British monarchy is a very good choice because it's one of the few that remains today to have a good bit of power, good bit of influence. A lot of it's more the soft power, soft influence. They don't, you know, make all the laws in Britain or anything. It's, uh, it's not a absolute monarchy anymore, but they still wield power and influence in other ways. Um, 
and this would fill the promise to David. Through Zedekiah, of course, who is not the most direct descendant, he, well, he might be. He might be. Uh, we don't have, or I don't have detailed records of who was firstborn compared to who was just the favored son. But if we go by the favorites and we go down to who the kings of Judah made king after them, uh, we run into a different line than Zedekiah's. However, Zedekiah's does happen to have more promises fulfilled to them, indicating that they are probably the more legitimate line. Dr. Thiel, the cog writer, has uh, a very nice packet. It's, it's a booklet, actually, uh, named Lost Tribes and Prophecies for anyone who wants to dig further into this. And that is my source for a lot of this. Uh, a very good chunk of the material I'm presenting today can be found and backed up with his quotations and with his work in Lost Tribes and Prophecies. Okay, theory three. African Americans or other non-African persons of color. Um, uh, one theory I've heard that is within this I guess cluster of theories actually is black Sephardic Jews, black Spanish Jews. Um, and it, it's a black Hebrew Israelite position. So it, it's very questionable. It, it's not right. It's based on actually faulty premises that the Israelites were black. This is also refuted in Lost Tribes and Prophecy. The Lost Ten Tribes are not black. And the Jews today are not black. The, the Jews came from Abraham, as did all the other tribes of Israel. And the Jews of today are dominantly, okay, they, there are some exceptions for those who, uh, especially married Ethiopians. Um, that, that was uh, a historical group of Jews running from Babylon, trying to get away. They ran to Africa and uh, went down the Nile uh, to try and escape. And then they ended up there and they intermarried with local populations. And so there are some legitimate black Jews. But on the whole, um, the black Hebrew Israelites, um, they are not the legitimate tribes. Um, at least not from what most people can tell. So this theory is inaccurate, especially because they cannot put forth who the Davidic monarch would have to be then, if all the tribes were originally black. If all if all the tribes were African American, or just a African in general, you don't have a good person to point to as King David. We'll go through some uh, some things that. People have brought up uh, some actual historical figures that they've identified as perhaps this King David, but I don't think there is a good explanation that would fit with this theory of what David would look like uh, and where he'd be from. So it's not a dogmatic position that I've heard of that David has to be someone who is dark in complexion. Well, his heir does not have to be dark in complexion. The fourth theory that I'm going to present today is that no known person alive today is the offspring of King David. This is made by many, including atheists, who view David as a literary figure or doubt the information which indicates there are positive solutions. They make this assertion, but it's because they don't think the proof is good enough. It's just because of doubt. It's not because of facts. It can just as easily be denied as asserted. You can just as easily say, yes, yes, th there is someone who is David's offspring today, and here's my proof, compared to saying, eh, no one alive today is related to David. Or no one can actually prove anything. It's simple nonsense for a lot of it. Uh, 
It's just people saying no, instead of using their brains and actually trying to come up with the proper answer. Okay, moving on. The fifth theory is Native Americans. This is a Mormon theory. They assert a group called the Mulekites were descended from King Zedekiah. There's an issue with this. And the Bible says that all Zedekiah's sons were killed. Right before his eyes, even. That's how explicit the text gets. All his sons were killed right before his eyes. No one of them survived. Now, this doesn't necessarily include his daughters like Tiatefi, who would have married Harriman and then passed the promise down of rulership to the modern-day descendants of uh, the British um, and Scottish monarchies um, who are now ruling today in Britain. Uh, King Charles, you would be the inheritor of the promises under that framework that Zedekiah's daughters received the promises. But there are no sons of Zedekiah to receive the promises, which this theory bases itself on. It's one of its presuppositions that there is a Davidically related tribe. This is inaccurate. This is clearly inaccurate. If you have a single scripture in hand where it legitimately straight and plain says all Zedekiah's sons were killed by the king of Babylon that this can't be given any respect as a theory this idea that there was a son of Zedekiah that came to native to America and became a native with a group of people it can't be seriously believed um, because the Bible refutes it as a side note, uh, Corey Antumer is a Mormon figure. Um, and I just wanted to bring that up because it is in the explanation of what this tribe is supposed to be. All right, the sixth theory is that the former ruling family of Ethiopia, the Solomonic dynasty, uh, of course, they claim descent through a son of Solomon, thus Solomonid or Solomonic dynasty are the words used to describe them. But it completely ignores the promise of God remained with the actual people of Israel, not with a random runaway son of Solomon, uh, who supposedly went to Ethiopia according to legend and myth and rumor. And the Solomonic dynasty did not begin to reign till the 13th century in Ethiopia. It took the, till the 13th century for these people to get on the throne, and they're actually dethroned today. They don't have a throne. They're not rulers. Um, they do not have a legitimate throne. So there's no way these people can be the actual inheritors of the throne of David. They cannot be, because they do not have a throne. It's rather plain and simple. I don't think I need to go into this much more. The seventh and final theory that I'm going to bring up is that Jesus Christ is the line of David ruling today. This is a spiritualized mainstream perspective. Furthermore, the promise that David will never lack a man to sit on the throne promise, that throne promise that was promised to him, uses a word indicating a human. The word is aish, and it is used in Genesis 2.24 in the following context. A man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. Such language does not describe Christ, who now is in heaven, who is wholly spiritual, who is not presently able to behave with all the abilities of a human man. Christ is totally unfit for this as well, because he is the one who gave the throne. He blessed David and his descendants with this throne to take it back and use it for himself and his own glorification. I suppose it's okay because he was the one who owned the throne in the first place and it belongs to him as it's part of his creation. But it's kind of counterintuitive. If he's going to give something to David and his descendants as a perpetual blessing, uh, a throne that's going to last forever, uh, why, why is he reusurping it? He really doesn't need it. Um, yeah. I mean, 
it's it's very irrational when you begin to think about it the throne and david's house and kingdom were supposed to be established forever um, a, a non-human heir cannot sit on an earthly throne so someone who is in heaven cannot sit on an earthly throne that's something i really want to bring up which is really disturbing when someone says that Christ is, you know, ruling and reigning on the throne of David, or that Christ is the heir to the throne of David. In the pure sense, no. He's not ruling and reigning on the throne of David. That is an earthly throne reserved for King David himself and for his descendants, his flesh and blood descendants. And I do want to emphasize the flesh and blood part. They must be human descendants to inherit a human throne. All right, so those are seven theories that I've brought forth. Seven theories of where the line of King David is today. Hopefully this has been educational for you. If you liked the video, please smash that subscribe button. And also like... Uh, Hit, hit the notifications bell um, is what some people also do if you would like to know more about the line of king david i would highly encourage you to check out a book called lost tribes and prophecies it's by the cog writer bob thiel and it's where i get a lot of information um, and i have gotten a lot of information for this video from that so i am really excited about the book. I'm currently working through it myself. Uh, I know most of the stuff that comes up in there, but it is very clear and very explanatory, and I would highly recommend it to anyone wanting to learn more about the Lost Ten Tribes or the Line of David. Thank you, and remember to subscribe.